Hey guys, what's up? It's Wes. We got a fun one for you this time. Uh, yeah, I was just working on a piece and decided to start recording in the middle of it. And I wanted to talk about a fundamental that might bring your artwork up to the next level, or even if you're working on a current project right now, something that you can kind of look at and very quickly figure out if you want to add some visual interest to what you're making. Uh, I do classify this as an art fundamental, but it's never, you know, you're never too good for fundamentals, <laughs> ever. Um, just always go back. Re I always say this, but no matter what you're working on, you can usually improve it by going and reviewing the fundamentals to make sure you got them. But anyway, we'll get into all that. But this video, I want to talk about the power of contrast in your painting. gang so yeah let's talk about contrast here um so first before we get too far into the topic i wanted to say a big shout out to the new masters academy this is where i found uh this reference image they have a full like stock library of reference images and i do recommend the website anyway um they have really cool tutorials and stuff like that and the people that are teaching there are really really freaking good <laughs> they're not just called New Masters Academy for no reason, like, they're really good. Uh, I'm not, like, sponsored by them or anything. Just know that it's a cool resource. Check it out if you haven't already. But I wanted to give credit where credit's due. Um, yeah, New Masters Academy reference stock library for this image. And um, I was in the middle of painting this image, and it occurred to me that I needed to kind of do some more contrasty stuff. Um, so I decided to record it. Um, basically, before I started recording, all I did was um, I just kind of eyeballed some color. I didn't do color picking or anything. Uh, this was part of the study. What I wanted to do is to make this picture in this photograph really look like a painting. And that was, that was the overall goal. And I wanted to do that with brushwork and with uh, contrast, which is the topic of this video. So. Now let's get into this. So contrast is one of those things that a lot of people hear the word and they think of it as one thing. And I was this way for a long time. In fact, it was only over the past year or so that I really started thinking differently about what contrast means. And normally as a visual artist or a digital artist or, you know, if you're a photographer or something, that deals with like a lot of post-processing. So if you take something into Photoshop or you take something into an image editing software, whenever you hear the term contrast, you probably think of value. You probably think of how bright are your lights and how dark are your darks and like what is the difference between them. That is absolutely um, a valid point of contrast. However, that is one small part of contrast. When I speak of contrast, what I'm really referring to is any difference at all. Any difference. Contrast. It could be a contrast of colors. It could be a contrast of shapes. A contrast of edges or brushwork or basically anything that is different than other stuff around it is contrast. And it really took a bit, you know, I've been a pro for about three years now. Um, so still baby steps, but what I'm, what I'm really finding out is that the secret to a good engaging image is contrast. How are you utilizing your differences, um, in, in the piece? So perfect example for this, um, as you're going to see what I end up doing, my contrast, the real big thing I wanted to work on, like lights versus darks was one thing. But really this one, the biggest contrast is brushwork style. So the background I kept is fairly uh, abstract and loose and, you know, really basic brushwork as far as shapes, like one or two big brush, uh, big sweeping brush strokes, as opposed to where I wanted the focal point, I went in and I worked with smoother brushes 
and also tighter brushes. So, so the, the brushes had less uh, impasto effect. It had less uh, the painterly edges, I guess. They were sharper, okay? So the edges are different as well. And what that does is that draws the eye. Anything that has contrast draws the eye. So if you have, let's say you're, you're painting, you know, or drawing a building or something like that, and the building has a lot of sharp edges, a great way to contrast that is have a giant moon in the background or whatever, because that's gonna be, there's no edges on the circle. You know what I mean? Like make sure that shape reads differently because that's going to draw that's going to draw the eye where you want it if everything else in the painting is very circular and round and flowy but your main focal point is very sharp and jagged that's going to get the attention and, and the same thing for yeah brushwork is if you want something to really be in focus literally render more closely what you want the person to look at. You know, our eyes cannot focus on one thing at a time, or I, our eyes cannot focus on everything at one time. It can only focus on one thing at a time. I always bring up the example of reading a book, and if you just stop and focus on one word, you can maybe see what some of the other words are, like directly around it, but words at the top of the bottom of the page or, you know, the opposite of where you're looking, you're not going to be able to tell anything. You know that they're words because you have the context of other words around them. Does that make sense? Like human beings are very good at recognizing patterns and putting pieces together. Like pattern recognition is one of the human strong points, right? So utilize that. Um, you know, I, I say this in some of my mentor classes and stuff like that, but there's a good acronym that I remember, and I even talk about it in my book, about uh, CRAP, C-R-A-P, Contrast, Repetition, Alignment, and Proximity. Uh, those are four main things that if you really deduce those and, and figure out how those are fitting in each one of your images, you're going to make more interesting images, in my opinion. Uh, just because you're problem solving on a visual spectrum instead of worrying so much about rendering style or oh look at how cool my brushwork is or whatever just break it down even further be like okay like for let's use the painting you're looking at uh, as an example I wanted to make sure that the person that the gentleman here that the pirate or the you know the bard or wh whatever you want to think of him as was the focal point and I wanted it to be kind of romanticized that nice Baroque era you know Renaissance era sort of painting but very loose um, I wanted it to have some energy I wanted it to be romantic so what I wanted to do is not keep it super tight until I got to like the rim light of his nose or the way the bandana or the head cover you know the shadow hits his skin or what you know what I mean like those are the areas I wanted to keep it almost like a razor blade I wanted to keep it really sharp compared to all of the other stuff because those are features of his right those are features his nose or his ear or his you know the kind of the, the the eye socket area if that's really sharp and everything else is really loose you're gonna beeline in to where the detail is every time um, another thing you can do is stack contrasts on top of each other so if you really want to drive home a focal point, and I mean really, like make no mistake, beat the viewer over the head about what they should be looking at, this is how I do it. So we're going to look into the looking glass a little bit, but literally, the focal point of all of my pieces is number one, going to have the highest color saturation. So the saturation of the color is going to be highest in the focal point, but also my values are going, the value contrast is going to be bigger. So the brights are going to be brighter and the darks are going to be darker 
in my focal point area. And the brushwork is going to be tighter in the focal point area. So if you're talking about three types of contrast, all put into this one area. So if the color saturation is brightest or you know more vibrant in one area, and as it goes away from that focal point, it gets less saturated. It gets more grays and muddy colors and stuff. Number one, that aids to the painterly feel because I, I love muddy colors. I love colors that are blended with gray, desaturated. Like I really like that because you can do a lot of cool nuancey stuff with that. It's very painterly. It, it feels like an oil painting. Very, very cool, right? I like that a lot. So uh, to really drive the point home, I can do that everywhere until I get to my focal point. And then I'm gonna get those like candy apple reds or like lime greens, like really just blow your eye sockets out, <laughs> you know, as far as what you're going to be looking at. Um, you know, and I'll subdue it a little bit in post-production and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe do some color overlays or whatever. But I'm making the conscious effort of like, this is going to just punch you in the face. I really want it to because I know where I want you to look. Um, don't be subtle about it. I, I tried I tried for so long, like during studies and stuff, to be really subtle and look at this and look at this. And in the day and age of social media and the day and age of people wanting information quickly, you got to have a fast read. And I learned this definitely from working on Varya and Warhammer and Star Wars and stuff. It's like, make the shapes good, make the read fast, get what you need. But then put some interest in there for the type of viewer that likes to study. So that's where your brushwork comes in. That's where your edges come in. Your kind of painterly smudges and stuff like that. That's really nice to do. And I used to really put a lot of focus on that to, to raise up the art. But, and I still do to a certain extent. But really what I, I want to focus on now are good shapes good silhouettes um, and then all the other stuff is extra all the other stuff is in service of you know like oh the edges are cool because they work in service of blurring out the background or in service of sharpening up the focal point or uh, you know the color once again is almost like a bridge like it gets more and more saturated the closer you get to the focal point um, it's all in service of the image uh, now I'm starting to finally wrap my thick head around, uh, <laughs> make it about the picture. Don't make it about the brushwork. Don't make it about the ego of look how cool this looks of like painterly, whatever. If it doesn't serve the image, get rid of it. And you know, I'm still going to go through that and I'm still going to learn it. And I'm going to try to balance, try to find that balancing act of cool brushwork and impasto stuff, thick brushes thin brushes, edges, just make the whole thing more cohesive um, and more designed. Like design the painting instead of just going in and painting and hoping for the best. Really design it. Know why you're making a certain decision. And I feel more empowered now that I've done that. And really it comes down to contrast, which is why I wanted to make this topic uh, or a video about this topic is the more I do work and the more I work with big clients and small clients and just work on different types of, you know, jobs, it all comes down to contrast. Like, how are you balancing all of these shapes or the edges or the brushwork or the colors or the values? Make sure that the differences mean something. And you're going to see your artwork take on a whole different life. Like, I'm getting more and more confident in my style because I know how to fix the problems now. Like, I've been through enough hardship, I've been through enough problem solving that I can probably make a pretty decent looking image. I can make an okay looking painting. Like, you can give me a subject, you can give me a reference, you can give me even from imagination now. This has helped my imagination work too. And we're going to talk about that in the new year, but this idea of like oh okay i can kind of make whatever i want but as long as i follow the rules of good contrast and edges and stuff like that the image is gonna sing it's gonna it's gonna be cool to look at 
And that's my goal. My, my biggest fear is to make stuff that's boring. I don't want to make boring art. Like, come on now. Um, <laughs> my, my job as a visual artist is to make something that really draws your eye and makes you excited to look at it and like want to do your own art or really study it or be like, oh my God, how did he do that? Like, that's the fun, right? That's the fun. That's the heavy lifting. And uh, I want you to be, uh, for that split second, I want you to forget you're looking at a painting. And then I really want you to be very aware that you're looking at a painting. Like, I think that dichotomy is really neat. So that's my goal, is I want you to be engaged when you look at the image. And I think contrast is the number one way, really the number one way, to get that sort of, uh, that sort of feel. So yeah, think about that. Whenever you're working on your next piece, if you're running into a rut, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know what to do, just focus on the differences. Why should my focal point, how is it different than the rest of the painting? Does it have more or less color? Um, I mean, some really like perfect examples of this. Have you guys ever seen those images that are like black and white images, but they have one thing in color? You know what I mean? Like, oh, the sunflower is bright yellow and everything else is black and white. It's a perfect example. You can't help but look at that flower. You know what I mean? Like, that's exactly what we mean. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, contrast is everything, man. The more and more I look, uh, the better it feels. Just go and just see it. Look at your piece objectively. If you have to flip the canvas, if you have to turn it to black and white, whatever you gotta do, just make as many differences as possible. And I promise you, it'll make a difference. <laughs> Pun intended, I guess. Anyways, that's my time. Go make your art really contrasty. I wanna see what it looks like. Uh, but until we talk again, uh, have fun, stay safe, go make cool art, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.